when we have been in some kind of pain or suffering for so long, we may not 100% want to let it go. The pain we are familiar with is sometimes easier to embrace than the unknown future of what life would be like if we were delivered. Welcome to the Pool of Bethesda. The Bible records only one main event that took place here, but it is one that has significant faith lessons that we can still all learn from today. Bethesda means house of mercy, and for centuries this area was believed to be a place of healing. But where are we exactly? Well, here is the Temple Mount, then you have the Eastern Gate, the Kidron Valley, the Mount of Olives, and north of the Temple Mount is the Pool of Bethesda. Now, there were actually two pools, the Northern Pool and the Southern Pool, but it was believed during the first century that the Northern Pool was filled in with debris and ruins and thus not in use. Speaking of ruins, trying to see a pool amongst all of this is a bit challenging. If something happened or even may have happened in the Bible, a church was usually built on that site. Here is a part of an archway from the Byzantine church built around the late 3rd century. These ruins here are from the Crusaders' chapel that was built in the 11th century. And here is the visible part of the southern pool that has been excavated so far. There's a lot more of this pool that hasn't been exposed as of yet. And when you cross over a dike separating the northern and southern pools, you come to a tunnel that has a part of the northern pool exposed, which is home to many pigeons and also still has water even today. Now let's begin to look at the story recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 5. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Today, the gate closest to the Pool of Bethesda is the Lion's Gate. It's possible this used to be called the Sheep Gate, or the Sheep Gate hasn't officially been located yet. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. Now, many translations omit verse 4, so here is what it says from the New King James Version. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. This has been a place dedicated to healings before Jesus was born. Here are healing baths that were made prior to the Romans occupying Israel to honor the Greek god Usclepius, who was the god of medicine and healings. So according to this often omitted verse 4, was this already a place of miraculous healings? It's unclear, and it doesn't really affect the miracle that Jesus performed here. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Another interesting finding with this small portion of the southern pool that's been exposed is these long steps that would have been used to get in the pool. So it's easy to imagine people laying along these steps waiting to get into the water. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. Then the religious leaders saw him carrying his bed and confronted him, but the man said he was healed but wasn't sure who did it. Then in verse 14, later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Then the man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. So what three lessons can we learn from this miracle? Number one, do you want to get well? Jesus' question in verse 6 seems like a foolish question, but hear me out. Why would Jesus ask him if he wanted to get well? When we have been in some kind of pain or suffering for so long, we may not 100% want to let it go. The pain we are familiar with is sometimes easier to embrace than the unknown future of what life would be like if we were delivered. Number two, our sins have earthly consequences. Now, Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Without Jesus, our sins will result in eternal death as we will end up in hell. But based on Jesus' statement in verse 14, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. We can conclude that this man's condition he suffered for 38 years was the result of some kind of sin. So, a question we may need to do a deep heart check on, is our suffering because of sinful acts we committed in the past or are currently committing now? 
If so, then we need to repent and turn from those things we know we shouldn't be doing. Number three, Jesus only healed one man at the pool. This last one is tough for those of us in the middle of suffering right now. Verse three indicates there were many people at this pool looking for healing. Why did Jesus only heal this man and not others? The simplest answer is we don't know. But there are clues in scripture that can perhaps point us to an answer. First, the Apostle Paul suffered a thorn in his flesh. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Sometimes God wants to use our suffering to bring him glory. In the book of Acts, we find another possibility as to why Jesus didn't heal everyone at the pool that day. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg for those going into the temple courts. Then, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter heals this man, and later in chapter 4, we see how old this man was. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. How many times did Jesus walk by this lame man going into the temple? Forget the fact that Jesus has been going to the temple since he was a child. During the popularity of his ministry, Jesus walked by this man and never healed him. Why? I think John chapter 14 gives us a big clue. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. Sometimes we are waiting to be healed or delivered from something because God is working through someone else. And when that appointed day comes and our paths cross with this person, then we may get a supernatural healing, or it may simply be a word from the Lord they tell us that sets us on the path to deliverance. Bottom line, contrary to the naysayers, this site is just another example of many that continue to confirm the validity of the Bible. Well, this concludes my review of the Pool of Bethesda. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if anything I said in this video would be helpful to someone you know that could be struggling, please share it with them. In my next review, I will touch on some dark and grotesque parts of Jewish history when I discuss the Valley of Hinnom. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.